So in this video we're going to look at the advanced setup on the CQ rack. So we're going to go to setup and the first thing we're going to just have a quick look at is the audio tab here. Most of it will be set up for you but um, the only thing you might want to just adjust is the talk back. So here you can decide whether you want the talk back to go to which individual channel so I for this setup we want, don't wouldn't want it to go on the chancel and the loop but we do want it to go on the auxiliary a b c and d in this case so it's going to use the talk back socket on the back of your mixer and it uses the latch technique so we will have we'll come to that in a moment but then we'll have to set up a soft key to be able to do that here. So let's go to the surface and go to soft controls. And then we've got an unassigned one here on eight. So we're going to go to unassigned and move that one down until we see the talk option, tap talk click apply and then when we press and hold that one that makes the torque um, back go to those on the band on auxiliary or A, B, C and D and then when we release it it takes that microphone out of their either their in-ears or on their stage monitoring. This is a great for rehearsals but maybe not for all live worship. Um, that's pretty much all we want to look at on the, on the, on the audio tab. But then on the left hand side we'll go to the surface part. And we're going to look at first of all how to do this strip alignment. So you've got your layers A, B, C, D, E and F. They correspond here look. So we can decide what we want. So there's nothing currently on F. So we're going to make a very basic operation. So say if the church is used for a very small service, we might want a handheld. We might want um, a single belt pack, the lectern and the pulpit. And they might want to play some thing from a Bluetooth digital hymnal or the HDMI. So let's just pop another um, handheld into that as well. So then that is, th those are the channels that are available now. If I click go to the faders and go to F, that then gives us a, a list of those available there. And that brings us nicely to our users tab. So if we go to setup and then we're going to go to the bottom here, skip to the bottom, which is users. We're going to make a new user here. So we're going to tap on this one there, give them a name. We're going to call that one small. Okay. And then we're going to restrict what scenes they are have available to them. And in this case, they're going to only have default to full available to them. We're going to make it active. So now that will be visible in the show page. And you can actually say that you want it to recall a certain preset. So in this case, we're going to say that it recalls the default one for us. But now we've created that special um, layer, what we can do is give that particular user some parameters. So because they're a basic one, we're not going to give them any um, USB abilities or any ability to store or modify any channels or anything in the library. We don't want them to be touching any of the effects or any of the mixers because we just want this this user to be a very simple user who's able to just turn sliders up and down and no matter what they press they're going to be that's all they're going to have access to so we're going to block everything apart from access to 
the controls over here. So we're going to say that they only have access to the, they do have access to the fader screen, but they don't have access to any of the apps. And they don't, I'm going to say that they don't have access to every, they don't have any access apart from to F. So F now means that they, so then that's our simple layout and we can block all of the other ones as well. So go down there and block all of that. So that means when they log into that, they will only have access to the soft keys, access to F on faders. And they'll also have access to the CQ control, which is great for very simple level of control. But we can also give them just access using the faders tab there to the very simple controls of the handheld microphones and the start and the Bluetooth, HDMI and hymnal. So that's users. We're just going to quickly go back to the setup tab here. Now we've looked at the the strip alignment. The only other area that we do want to just quickly highlight is the mixer configuration. So you've got inputs here that where you can stereo them if you want to so if you want to combine or disconnect them the same is for your mixers so if your groups are currently stereo but you could make them mono um, and you can also do the same here for how many groups you have versus how many auxiliaries you have so if you want more auxiliary outs you can reduce that number which means that they move out. So you can have up to 12 auxiliaries in total or 12 groups, depending on what how you want to set that up. Um, so that's where you would find that. If we've told you that you need to adjust the number of auxiliaries, then uh, that's where you do it. So that's setup, mixer config, bus configuration, and then you tap the number of um, the one that you want more of and that will move them over to that particular one. Click apply, and then you get more auxiliaries than you, so for this one, we're gonna say 12 auxiliaries, and then that gives you 12 augs out. Everything else, um, we tend to have set up on installation. The only other area is if you've got a new network, we might just want to go to setup network, and then here, you might just want to um, that gives you the IP address. So if you're using a third party app, this is where you will need that there. Or if you need to configure it and take off the DHCP, that's where this is done. You can insert your static IP address here. You can also give your unit a name here, which gives it the which just makes it more identifiable when you're searching using the app.